Uh, Mosh, Moses Chibuka is right here, he's a uh, coordination assistant, uh, people power. People power. People power. 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 Back home in our offices, um, you know, and of course dispersed with our tear gas and live bullets. That's the situation in Uganda today. Uh, we are thankful that we are not isolated by our fellow members of the East African community, our brothers and sisters. It is not the first time. Kenyans have always stood with us. I am alive today able to speak to you because you Kenyans started protests that spread to the world over, and uh, those are the protests that pressured uh, General Museveni's military regime to, reduce me, to uh, release me from the dungeons where I had been uh, detained. We are thankful for that. We should always remind each other that dictatorship in any part of Africa is a threat to democracy in every part of Africa. Like democracy, dictatorships are contagious and very easy to spread, especially across the border. When I was looking at one of the placards, uh, one of the ladies was holding, it was saying yesterday it was Tanzania. Mm -hmm. Today it's Is Uganda. It? And tomorrow it, it might, might be Kenya. Kenya. Yes. And uh, you, we have been taught uh, time and again that uh, freedom and democracy is always just one step away from extinction if we are not vigilant. While we appreciate you, while we call upon you to continue standing with us, to continue highlighting our plight, we also ask you to be vigilant, to defend the little freedoms that you have jealously, to defend the democracy you have jealously. We are very aware that Kenya is certainly not at the levels of democracy mm -hmm. that it deserves yeah. to be, but you are certainly on the road to where all of us want to be. Keep going, keep being vigilant, but most importantly, let's look out for each other as citizens of East Africa. Mm -hmm. Let's continue holding the authorities accountable to respect the rule of law, to respect the rights of all the people that they rule over. I thank you very much, and I greet you once again. Viva democracy, viva! Viva! viva. viva. Members of parliament to introduce an idea of uh, removing the presidential two-term limits. Uh, we want uh, to send this message because we know Uganda has lived through that uh, experience. We want to send a message to the members of parliament that as human rights defenders, as activists, we want the constitution implemented to the letter. We cannot allow a perpetual presidency because we know the effects of that. We have seen it in Uganda, we are seeing it in uh, Rwanda, and Kenya cannot go that direction. So we are urging Kenyans to resist any such attempts. Any individual in power for more than 10 years and he feels they need to continue still being in power, it means that that individual is incompetent and that they cannot deliver their mandates because 10 years is more than enough time you need to express your development plans for you to implement whatever you want to do. And there is a reason why you have term limits, so that you can allow others also to get an opportunity to lead this country. It's introducing fresh blood. It's introducing new ideas. So we are saying as Haki Africa, uh, learning from the experience of Uganda, that we shall resist any attempts to change the constitution, to remove the presidential two-term limits. And maybe uh, His Excellency can also speak to that uh, from their experience, and then we'll open it up to members of the media to ask questions. Thank you very much. And they need to maintain constitutionalism, not just constitutions. Right now, to our brothers and sisters in Kenya, I don't want to speak to it. I want to point at it. I don't want to use so many words. I want to point at Uganda. We experienced it in 2005 when General Museveni moved through his proxies uh, a scheme to change the constitution and remove term limits. And when it was time for him to be held back by the age limit when he clocked 75, he once again, through proxies, uh, moved 
a scheme to move to change the constitution once again. Of course, he did that with a lot of impunity, with a lot of violence, but he did it. What does it show you, Kenyans, that that is how it starts? It mm -hmm. might start like one errant MP mm -hmm. making irresponsible statements. And yes, some leaders might actually come out to deny it. General Museveni, uh, while he was being interviewed here in Kenya, he said, certainly not, I would not rule beyond 75. When it was talked about that he was intending to change the constitution and remove term limits, he dismissed it as idle talk. But ultimately, mm -hmm. you know, we lost lives, we lost lots of resources, all in a bid to change the constitution and maintain himself in power. So do not be woodwinked. It is you and only you, the people of Kenya alone, that can retain your constitution, that can protect your constitution. Of course, we continue to tell you that defend your constitution before your constitution is too weak to defend you. Thank you so much. Um, we'll now open it up to anyone who might have a question so that uh, we can respond. Yes, Mutalaki. Regard to? Ah. Thank you very much. Um, while I like to hold individuals accountable for their individual wrongs, while I want to hold General Museveni for his atrocities and his, you know, impunity in Uganda, while we want to hold him personally and individually accountable, in the context of East Africa, we shall hold the East African leaders accountable because we are brought together by values. It's unfortunate that over time the East African community has been reduced to a club of presidents. Mm. It has been reduced to a club of incumbents, you know, where none of them holds each other, holds the other accountable, but instead are there to buffer each other and defend each other. They tend to put uh, diplomacy ahead of democracy and ahead of rights. So we still hold them accountable, not just the East African community, but also the African Union. Mm -hmm. It has let us down. Mm -hmm. It is very, very disappointed, disappointing to see the European Union and the United States and the UN Human Rights and other international organizations looking out for the rights of Africans when you have our African brothers and sisters whose major preoccupation is to keep themselves in power at the cost of the rights and freedoms of their own people. Thank you so much. Any other question?